Hello and welcome to my little video on how you can annotate images for image segmentation datasets using Atoms. First of all, of course, you will need Atoms and for that I recommend you to use the Atoms annotator snapshot and just download the zip file which is cross-platform so you can use it on Linux, Mac or Windows. I've already done that and extracted here in this directory. So if you look in the bin directory, you can see there's the start GUI batch file for Windows or the shell script for Linux and Mac. So for showing you how to do annotations, I'm going to use a data set and I'm just going to reuse one that we use for our user friendly deep learning project. And I'm just going to go on the image segmentation one and that came with 12 data set is a subset of an Oxford University data set um, where they annotated dash cam videos and uh, even though it's already annotated for image segmentation I'll just use the raw input images as an example here and I'll discard basically the annotation so I'm just going to download that it's a relatively small one just 15 megabytes finish and extract that cool so in there you basically have a JPEG and then associated PNG so that's the image what it looks like some of them are a little bit dark must have been a rainy day and then the annotation here in this case is a grayscale image where the index of the label is stored there as the grayscale bit Right, so I'm just going to delete all those PNGs because we want to start from scratch for our little example here. Dun, 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 dun. Just seeing where they start, somewhere halfway down. Here we go. Deleting all of them. Okay. So I'm starting items. Takes a few seconds. Analyze the class path. All right, we're going in the flow editor, and then we're opening the flow that comes with it, which is the image segmentation annotation flow. So that one allows you to generate annotations in various formats. So you can either use blue channel, so where the um, label index is stored in the blue channel of an RGB image, grayscale, the ones that the um, Oxford University dataset users you can use index PNGs, so um, images, a PNG images where it uses a predefined palette, or individual layers, which is an atom specific one where each label is basically stored as a separate images, a separate image with the label name as a suffix in the name to make it a bit easier to figure out what you have actually annotated in that um, dataset rather than just bits where you don't actually know what they resemble. All right, when you start that, it basically asks you for the image directory. So I'll just go for that one, the grayscale one. Um, you can select the file format. So we just want to do in this case, um, for instance, a grayscale one, labels that we're going to have. So in this um, data set we have cars, we have cyclists, and we have pedestrians. And um, we want to make sure that it actually has an implicit background so uh, we don't actually annotate the background. So we just say implicit background, so that means basically that the labels will start at one rather than zero. <clears throat> and um, you can also have the choice at least for when you're using individual layers for your annotations then you could also have along multiple annotations per pixels but in this case we can only have a single annotation per pixel because we only have one annotation image with grayscale or blue channel or index png so i have to select that all right then we select um, the images that we will work on so you can also search for a subset or things that you've already done previously I'm just going to select um, some images that I want to look at 
and you can see now um, on the left you basically have your annotation um, panel so you can see the image background so if they were for instance transparent or whatnot you could see things um, you can define how transparent your annotations will be so zero is basically fully transparent one would be um, opaque so you can see that also here in that little um, helper um, tooltip so if the image is a bit too dark you can also increase the brightness if you wanted to um, and then on the left sort of like the three labels that we've designed uh, defined at the start of the flow so clicking on the button of the label basically activates this label um, and that basically makes it active for annotations or um, for the tools over here so you have various tools so you can have just the pointer which is just going around and whatnot um, you have a fill bucket um, where you can fill in closed bits you have the eraser for removing things you could apply filters as well and you have a pencil um, and you have sort of like either a square or a round sort of like pencil that you can use with a certain size that you want to do depending on the image if you're dealing with very large images you might want to use a larger pencil size okay and last but not least so like on top you also have sort of like a zoom so you can have as is 100% or you can fit it in or zoom out or zoom in depending on um, the image um, just make it fit and then I'll just go here since we have a cyclist here I'm just gonna select the cyclist I'll stay with the pencil and just sort of like trace sort of like the outline of that you can probably do spend more time it and make better annotations than I do I'm just showing you how it's done and then I can basically select the fill tool um, and do that and that's already done and then we can go to the car Oops. Um, and do here sort of like cars so that's one car there's more cars here there's another oops that was actually bad so I can undo that so when actually um, annotating something a single click does a dot or if you hold it down you can do a trail and if you don't like what you've done you can always use up here then the undo redo buttons so that wasn't actually very good so I'll redo that again and then this cow there and then so car here we'll just do that we'll just quickly fill those and then we go over to the pedestrian and we might actually sort of like the round one and actually use a smaller one also zoom in a bit you can also use the mouse wheel for zooming in and out and then you can trace The smaller the objects, the more fiddly it becomes, of course, but that's unfortunately just the nature of things. And then we can fill that bit. I want to fill that bottom pixel there. There we go. And then so good. I'll remove that bit. Okay. So yeah, so you can see you can do things here relatively easily. And once you're happy, you can then hit OK. And if we go back into our data, um, you'll see that there's basically now an image. You can't really see much. Uh, in, so you can see probably a very, very faint outline here and there, sort of like of our pedestrian, cyclists, and cars. Um, all right. There will be another one so if you want to preview um, what you've done rather than going through the annotation process here again you can use the uh, preview browser um, just go on that five search for that cool so you can select then the jpeg that you are looking for 
And then um, you can, for instance, use the simple segmentation notations handler. If you pop up the options with the three dots here, how to read basically the image itself, the JPEG, um, how to read the overlay, so that's the annotation. So in this case, we want to use a PNG image reader. Um, and then the colorizer, this is the blue channel one, which is not correct. So we're going to change that to the grayscale one. And then uh, you can also set the alpha for that as well. All right, so that's our three different ones. Oops. And okay. So that's that. And then you can basically just happily annotate more and more of the images. Um, probably just make that a little bit larger for annotating again. Um, and then, yeah, you can basically do your cars here. There's a lot of cars parked here at the side of the road. There's another one over there. <coughs> And you can fill those. Oops, that was not correct. Oops. Looks like I have not properly filled. Might have. Oh, yeah. That one. That one. Oh, yeah. I've forgotten to close it properly, so the flood fill goes out. One's fixed. There we go. <coughs> So undo button is quite helpful. All right, and then we can hit OK for that one too. So excellent. So that's done. And then you can basically, once you're done finishing, uh, because you can select more images that you want to, if you don't want to annotate an image, you can hit cancel. Or if you want to stop annotating at all, um, then you can just stop the flow. Wow, that's queer. And if you wanted to, you can basically then just go through and re-annotate and refine the images and whatnot. And that would allow you then to, um, for instance, add more labels. For instance, if you wanted to have the road as well. Um, so if you wanted the road or buildings, um, traffic signs, things like that annotated as well, then you could do that as well then. And then you can basically refine your annotations. And you just have to make sure that new labels get appended at the end rather than insert it at the start because that would just sort of like throw the order that you've currently have in your um, PNG files and that wouldn't work then. Okay, so that's then done and once you're there um, a lot of the frameworks have Deep learning frames that are out there use different formats. So some of them use blue channel, some use grayscale, some use index PNGs. Um, hence it is um, quite painful sort of like um, re-annotating for instance or converting things. So that was one of the reasons why we developed the Y notations library. That's a Python library that allows you on the command line to convert dataset formats. So it can be used for object detection as well and also image segmentation. And there are a few examples out there how you can use that. Um, let's see whether we have an example here. So here would be an example if I'd um, used separate individual layers, um, then I could use the y annotations convert subcommand and then use the plugin from layer segments, IS, IS for image segmentation, um, grab all the images. Uh, and I just want to, for instance, work on the car label that I want to convert and then turn that into an index PNG and then I'll put it. But also then, since the deep learning framework, I also want to make it so that there's going to be a train and validation split 80-20 with via the split names and split ratios options. And that's really up to you how many splits you're gonna do, whether you wanna train test validation or just a train and validation one. Um, and yeah, so you can do that then with that. And then you can uh, happily train the model. And once you annotate more or have also more batches, um, so you can also then 
do that um, with the framework so you can also split based on a per batch basis um, so that each batch will be represented in train test and validation for instance that's possible as well all right thank you very much and good luck welcome back in my previous attempt at annotating i noticed that i actually used the wrong label so this is a great chance to actually show how you can fix things so i'm just gonna rerun things go for my subset again and in that image i made a boo-boo so I actually as you can see i labeled them the cars as pedestrians so what i'm going to do now i'll make sure that i actually label it as cars so choose the fill button um, and yep it's now selected car and then just fill it we're good to go and then i can hit ok and this actually now properly shows so as you can see it's easy really really easy sort of like to fix things up and um, this just happens but thanks